What's up, y'all? Today, I'm gonna be teaching you guys how to land your first electrical engineering position. Whether this is, whether you wanna be, uh, get an internship or you're ready to get your first job, I'm gonna be telling you guys exactly what I did to achieve this. And on my last video, when I was just recommending people to become electrical engineers, um, a lot of people were asking, how did I do my resume? How can they get hired? So if you guys don't know me, I'm an electrical engineer and I just wanna help others who wanna become electrical engineers as well and others who just wanna improve the circumstances in their life. So I make videos because I know at a certain point in my life, I, will, I didn't know what to do. And luckily I chose electrical engineering and here we are today. Currently at this uh, bowling place, I don't know if you know in San Antonio, um, haven't really checked it out, but let me know if you know where this is at. So today I'm going to the gym and bring you guys with me. Um, Gives me some time to explain some serious things to you guys instead of wasting time um can give some value to you guys so this is my my little audi you know my car smells good because i got my little trees and let's turn on the map before i start okay good enough all right y'all so you wanna so either a you already started college or B, you are someone who has a lot of experience in things that electrical engineers work with. Uh, or C, you have already completed your degree and now you're trying to find a position. So this is what I did, right? So initially, I didn't, I didn't know all of this until I started applying for jobs and pretty much listening in on everything that they wanted me to well, the questions they were asking me during my interviews. So when it comes to building your resume, the number one thing I would say, which is also what I recommend people who are new is always try to orient the projects that you've done with the type of positions that you want to work for. For an example, if you want to work for a defense company, make sure you tailor your projects that you do in your senior design or you do on your private time that are, you know, towards that specific job position. Because whenever I got to all of my interviews, the first thing they talked about was my projects. Yes, they know I graduated from college, so they didn't ask too much about that. But let's say I was somebody who didn't have my own um, my own project done, they definitely would have asked me about school, but they already know I graduated college, so they, they don't need to ask me about that. Before they said anything about my resume, before they looked at my me playing D1 soccer or anything like that. Most of the managers that interviewed me initially asked me, oh, okay, I'm looking at your projects and blah, 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 blah. Now, you're, most people, whenever they make their resumes, they worry too much about all the extra little stuff, the spice here and spice there. Honestly, from my personal opinion, from what I've seen, it seems like a lot of managers want to see that you have projects in your resume that can correlate with your job position. Um, so my my very first job that I got, I made, uh, what's it called? A patch antenna. If you don't know what this is, you can look it up. So a patch antenna is something that has to do with RF, radio frequency. And we use metal materials. It was a cool, cool experiment, experiment. And I don't wanna explain it right now because it's gonna sound boring to you guys. But I made that. And I added that on my resume because a lot of people coming out of college don't make patch antennas or don't even know how it works. And not only that, the software that I used was CST. Because I was able to use CST, I was able to put get interviews with jobs that use that specific software. A lot of electrical engineers are coming out of college with MATLAB skills and your default uh, circuit analysis and regular electrical engineering skills. You wanna leverage certain techniques or skills that other electrical engineers that are coming out of college won't have. So I took the route of choosing an RF project. I took a, I took an elective that was uh, metal materials, which is the modification of regular RFs. And I did it on a patch antenna. And that was what I used as leverage. So the first things first, when it comes to making your resume, if you are still in school, let put your school, your current school. And if you have already took, 
taken any techno classes already, um, make sure you add it under your school section. So most people will just be like, hey, I went to University of Texas, I'm doing electrical engineering, boom, they did that. And then they'll add underneath it, oh, I got my associate's degree here and there, boom, they did that, and then they go on to next. Don't do that. So when it comes to your electrical engineering major, there's gonna be a lot of jobs you're gonna apply for and some of them want different things. So if you took a specialized class that might stand out to this employer, make sure where you put, hey, I went to um, University of Texas for electrical engineering. Under there, make sure you place what class. So if you're trying to get a, if you're trying to get a job in let's say power, uh, somewhere that does a lot of power work. So make sure you put that, hey, I've already taken power electronics especially if you're trying to find an internship. If you're trying to find an internship, you wanna make sure that employer knows that, hey, I've already started getting experience in this area. So you might spend less money to train me and I can help you guys already. And once you graduate college, whatever job you're applying for, if you're applying for, let's say OpenAI and you wanna do something related to artificial intelligence and you took classes like that in college, make sure you put it on your resume under your your college portion because an employer is not gonna know what classes you took. He just is assuming that you know the basic electrical engineering stuff. But you wanna make sure you put those stand up, standout classes for that position so they know that, hey, hey, although this guy got his electrical engineering degree, he took this class and this class that's directly cor correlated to what we want. And that's how you put yourself ahead of others. When it comes to resumes and applying to jobs and stuff like that, your best bet is to make projects that just, you know, the easiest way I should put it is find your dream uh, workplace, right? Whichever company that you dream of being a part of, find out what makes them the most money, right? And make a project that's dedicated or surrounding that area because employers wanna hire somebody who's gonna help them make more money. And if you already make projects on your own that's related to what they do, then it's very hard for them to reject you. Okay. Uh, hold up, y'all. I gotta take this exit. So I gotta focus on the road. Yeah, I'm going to LA Fitness if you guys work out. Um, yeah, so you wanna make sure you have your schooling. If you don't have any electrical engineering schooling, I would try to get some at least. Because employer, there, like when you look at uh, job job descriptions, a lot of the time they would recommend what what's preferred is an, a bachelor of electrical engineering and or computer science or related field or seven or more years of relevant experience. You will work with some electrical engineers that may not have your electrical engineering degree, but because they have years of experience and or they're just really good at it and may, they may have not went to college for it, but they're just really, really good at it. Like at my current company, I met one guy, he went to college and got a mechanical engineering degree. Seven years later, he's a full blown electrical engineer. Because he worked with electrical engineers his whole career at this company, he's gotten so good that I would personally say that he's at a master's level for electrical engineering. But you just get that by experience and practice. Now he's carrying on full-blown projects in electrical that that's surrounded that's it's that is mainly in electrical engineering, although he's got his degree in something else. Which is proof to you that just because of how you do in college right now, it doesn't dictate how you're gonna do the rest of your life. I know all of us get nervous when it comes to reach out to companies. We're like, man, I don't know everything. I struggled here and there in these classes. What if I'm not ready to be working here? What if I'm not ready to be a electrical engineer? Trust me, everybody, when we all get our first jobs in our professional field, we will. most of us are not ready because there's just so much information coming from, so much information coming from the corporate world or once you get to your career, 
they don't teach you that in college. So there's there will always be a learning curve. And the, the quicker and earlier you touch this learning curve, it's just the better you'll catch along. So if you haven't caught if you have not caught my drift yet, the number one way to get hired when it comes to um, internships or electrical engineering companies, it's the pro I would say your number one thing is the projects you do, right? But before that, try to get contacts, all right? I know this one's a no-brainer, but I'm gonna mention it because I know there's somebody out there that may, you know, not understand the power, the power of contacts. The contacts you make can definitely help you get a resume. Um, the contacts you make can help you get a job. I got, I got some interviews by having friends that work at certain companies some certain friends can put your resume in get a resume oh look at that first spot that's how you know god loves you no just as i'm pulling in this guy is leaving god is amazing god is good god is great thank you lord all right let me park real quick yeah i don't have a reverse camera so i'm just pure driving skills all right sometimes even if you don't meet the qualifications because somebody in the company recommended you they will most likely select you because somebody who they trust vouched for you. But then again, if you're at the college level, the people who might be vouching for you have only been in the workplace for one year, and most managers are gonna be like, mm, what does he really know, right? But if you have somebody who's more seasoned, who's in the company, then boom, those are the type of people that can definitely get you on a nice gig. So, number one, we know it's your context. When it comes to your resume, Make sure you place projects that are correlated or your projects that most relate to that job that you're applying for. And if you're sitting to yourself and you're like, man, I don't have any projects, you're already losing. There's somebody out there who maybe followed a, a 30 minute tutorial on YouTube and made a simple project that's gonna get hired now because he has a project to show. And once, once you have that, um, if you had any past work experience at any like Chick-fil-A or something like that, that was like for three or four years, put it on there because employers like to see that, Hey, you're somebody who doesn't quit like automatically because right now in the tech world, a lot of new hires usually like to leave after one or two years and employers like seeing that, Hey, we can see from your past history that you're not a person who jumps jobs and it can definitely help you. Now, during your interview, right? Let's say you already got your interview. When they start asking you about your project, please don't do my, my mistake that I did initially. The first time I had my interview, I, I didn't even look over my projects, right? And I was in my first interview and they asked me, all right, so we see your projects here. Explain to us what happened in this project. And me not looking over my documents and file, I was just like trying to go off the top of my head from what I remember. And at this point, you know, you didn't, I already graduated and I didn't remember all the following steps that we followed, right? And I was like stuck sometimes and sometimes they'll be like, hey, what what did you use? What parts did you use for this? And I'm like, man, I gotta, I gotta look over my documents because I couldn't name everything. Now, that was the most embarrassing thing that I've ever experienced. After going through that, I was like, there's no way that's happening again. Like the interview just sitting there, you choking on whatever you said you made and you can't even explain it. So right after that interview, I already knew I was cooked. I already knew I was cooked. I knew I wasn't getting it. So immediately after, I opened up all my project documentation and I was just going over, refreshing my mind. So whenever I get my next interview, they all they all asked me, one of the first things they asked me, oh, I see your project here. Explain to me your design process and what happened for you to make it happen. And I was just breaking it down. Hey, I did this, I did that, boom, I, I, I finished it. So I'll give you an example. They, a lot of the time they ask me, oh, there's your buck converter on here. Uh, how did you make that, right? So I've, you know me, I said, we, we had a tap. All right, so I'm like, right now I'm gonna give you my interview response, right? So for my senior design, my team and I were, uh, were going to design an electric e-bike. And for a certain part of our design, I needed to make an electric, uh, we, we needed a, a step down converter uh, for all our smaller components that needed to run the electrical system. And our battery 
was an 18 volt battery, but I needed, it was a 36 volt battery, but I needed to take down to five volts. So at this point in time, we hadn't learned how to make buck converters um, physically. So I had to develop a circuit and then go online and look up how I can make a PCB because I've never made a PCB before in my entire life. So then I ended up finding out that Altium was one of the best ones to use. So I got the student version and I started looking up tutorials, studying and trying my best to make this uh, step down cover, this bunk converter become a reality. Lo, long and behold, uh, a week goes by, I'm starting to get familiar with the software. Finally, I was able to put the buck converter together. And then I was also able to attach one of the modules that we were gonna have separately, um, connect with the board and solder it. And I had an LED light attached on it uh, so it can let us know when the power is on and the buck converter is coming down. Because previously, some, some of the students, their board were burn or they wouldn't know where the power was at. So we had LEDs in certain places to let us know that, hey, the power made it all to this point. So the error is somewhere in this middle port. And then, so cut scene, that's that's pretty much how it started. And then usually after that, I'll start naming the components, the parts. I don't wanna bore you with all that stuff. Uh, so that's just me breaking it down. I didn't know, I had a goal. I didn't know how to do it. So I find a solution, I learned. I did my own research. I, uh, I got the, the results that I wanted and I was able to execute. That's what employers want, right? They wanna know that, hey, if you come across a problem, can you fix it? Can you can you do your own research? Yes, you have your manager and other coworkers you can ask, but ultimately, can you take the time and due diligence to do your own research and learn it so you don't take away other people's time? So I think if you can really maximize um, your projects, you will you will succeed. If you guys want me to actually show you my resume, I can in another video. Uh, but this is very direct, and I just didn't want to waste any time. All the editing and all that stuff is fine, but sometimes people just need a hero face to face, man to man, man to woman. I don't know who's behind the screen. Uh, my analytics says majority of my watchers are male, but I know there's going to be more females down the line. I hope that pick up electrical engineering because we need more women in the field as well. So yeah, if there's any other senior people in that are seeing this video, can you let others know in the comment section down below? Because I'm, I'm still, I will still consider myself fairly new to the, the environment. Um, and maybe there's a hiring manager out there that can give us a better detail down in the comment section down below. And, um, yeah, so if you really appreciate this video, hit the like button, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Jadabini's out.